Welcome everybody to another episode of the Johto Cast, your Star Wars gaming podcast. I am Joe, and uh, not Evan. Evan is not here tonight, but we do have Leo, hey, and Kurt, yo, and you know what? I let's just we're just, we're going for it. Um, this this time we're talking about what to expect for Star Wars games in 2023. Yeah, last time we talked about our best and worst of 2022, and this time and and our hopes for 2023. This time we're gonna really dive into 2023, specifically talk about the things that we know for sure are coming out. Yeah, get kind of a kind of a roadmap for what gaming is gonna happen this year probably oh so yeah let's just go through it in chronological order what is the first thing that comes out this year for star wars games i think it is star wars jedi survivor jedi survivor comes out on march 17th star I wars hunters has been um coming out this year for like the last three years so <laughs> star wars hunters Wait. could the 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 tie-in novel for Star Wars Hunters got pushed back, and that comes out in March, I think. So hmm. that could mean Hunters might come out this spring. Um, so we'll get all like the secret plot details from the book before the game <laughs> yes. even comes. Uh, yeah. but, I, um, but I think the game's after, plot will be after, spoiled for me. Yeah, and ruin all the the complex backstories of these characters. Uh, like yeah, the double and, double Jawa's noble end. Or <laughs> but so beyond this march release date for jedi survivor do we honestly even have any other hard release dates um i don't think so okay um we do have some dates for things that aren't releases but let's keep going through the year so for sure jedi survivor is coming out on march 17th i think we're all very excited about that at least i mm-hmm. am yeah, I mean, I, I mean, like I've said before, if they can tighten up the combat a little bit from the first one, and uh, maybe eliminate a couple of the weird bugs you'd run into while, while doing some of the jumping, climbing, swinging stuff, um, I think we'll have a game of the year contender, possibly. I I hope it's that eating? good. <laughs> yes, he is. He's on camera. Okay. If you want to watch it, I, between, it's just I, between every word to chew. Yes, our patrons can join us and see live footage of Leo eating while we record. <laughs> Sign up now. I had to work through my lunch today because we have code freeze coming up tomorrow in prep for our release of a project I'm working on. So I didn't get to eat anything today. So I'm really, yeah, Joe. So check your damn privilege. Okay. Stop being that ableist. Uh, <laughs> you could have said, Hey, those things. Can we start 30 minutes from when we were planning on starting? <laughs> um, if you're a patron. You too can <laughs> <laughs> see us argue or whatever. <laughs> What were we talking? Oh, Jedi Survivor. Uh, I was I I was pessimistic about a lot of upcoming releases in our previous episode, but I do hope it's good. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope it's good. I hope it doesn't have like a sophomore slump. Um, but we don't have that much information yet. Just those two trailers, which is a lot of vague speculation stuff. So. I mean, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, so, it's Jedi cool. Survivor, first thing, that's probably going to be the biggest Star Wars thing this year. You know, just in terms of most places, people playing it, talking about it. Because it's a highly anticipated video game. The next Star Wars thing that will happen is Adepticon, where all of the world championships are happening. And... We'll be getting our first hands-on play time with Star Wars Shatterpoint. 
which then comes out in the summer sometime, according to their original announcement. And I don't think we even know yet if it's the core set first and expansions later, or if they all come together in one big wave like other Star Wars games have had. I, don't yeah, think I mean, I guess I details. would expect the big, like announced expansions to come out alongside it. That's, I, I hope that's so. what Crisis Protocol did. They had Hulk and MODOK as expansions alongside the core. And I think that's better for them if they do that, because then people who like the core can immediately start buying new stuff. It gives you more stuff to try right away, because a lot of times the core on its own like isn't quite a full experience. You know, I don't know what the list sizes are like in this game, but it'll be nice to have all of them at once if they cool. do that. And now that we've gotten <clears throat> articles for Gideon and Death Troopers from AMG... Dark, Dark Troopers. Troopers. Or, sorry, yeah, Dark Troopers. Uh, we might see... Canonically, they've never even killed a single person. <laughs> the least death of all the troopers. <laughs> we might see some kind of article or maybe a stream regarding Shatterpoint from them. Um, Did because they? I think say we should that that they were going to start releasing more information about the game starting in January. Yeah, before, of course they've also that, been having be kind of they were going to be having a new website for about six months now. <laughs> All of the Shatterpoint info is on the new website. They just don't realize. <laughs> we don't have it. They're like, man, traffic's pretty low. Um, but the fact that so, we have articles now for Gideon and Dark Troopers makes me think those could be coming up pretty soon, like in the next month or something. Have they? And let me check the website if they've updated yet. I it should be a release it. date because people are taking pre-orders for them. But... Yeah, you'd think so. So um, for Shatterpoint, Evan and I are going to be at Adepticon, and we will be doing our best to get some footage and information of the demos and all that stuff. Um and then that'll be out this summer. Okay, so uh, Gideon supposedly, according to their website, has a release date of February 17th. Okay. If they will make that, I guess, you know, we'll. I would see. imagine Dark Troopers are going to be about the same. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, they yeah those are release. listed as the same day. Yeah. So those will come out before Jedi Survivor and then completely, that'll preempt that game kill off all the excitement for that game everyone will only care about gideon and dark troopers so everyone will just be talking about murderizers <laughs> yeah the the big beat em cricket bat that the death trooper <laughs> has as a heavy weapon called the murderizer that is i'm i'm sorry i hate that name <laughs> i'm surprised that got lucasfilm approval no 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 that honestly sounds like a george lucas name like, I don't know. It like, sounds like, like an like, like he's, guy he's the He's the third brother of... Uh, he's the third brother of Darth Maul and Savage Opress. <laughs> Murderizer. <laughs> Brutalite. <laughs> I, I don't know. It sounds to me like somebody who spends too much time on the internet came up with it. Um, but uh, getting back to Shatterpoint, I think... It's gonna it's gonna be really nice here as information starts to roll out in the next uh, month or two um, to finally get answers to some of those questions of okay exactly what scale is this um, how is it just a crisis protocol clone how does it differ from crisis protocol um, you know things like that right how long do games last all this stuff mm -hmm. so we'll definitely have all that soon yeah, um, i hope you take a ruler with you to uh adepticon and get some measurements <laughs> i mean that's not a terrible idea i'm sure people would appreciate that evan can like distract the demo giver while you like measure everything quick behind their back I mean, I just have to take a photo with a thing next to a thing. <laughs> I'm not going to bring a ruler. i got to bring some arbitrary form of measurement. Like a banana? banana? Yeah, banana. Like, <laughs> can I just place this banana on the table? I mean, I mean you're going to have, pretty, you're gonna have lots of Legion minis there with you. Yeah. 
the Star Wars The Deck Builder from Fantasy Flight Games is also in, supposed to come out this summer, right? Star Wars The Deck Building Game. Um, I just pulled it up on the Asmodee store. It's actually listed as March 3rd. What? That's no, what it says. I thought it, I thought it was a summer release. Am I crazy? I don't know. That's so soon, March third. I mean, the website just might be wrong, but that's what it says. So I don't know. So we we might well, have more news on that soon too, if they do some preview articles for that too. Well, there's a they're going to be playing it on stream tomorrow, aka a number of days ago when you listen to this. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So we'll hopefully have some more. Let's see. But, but, yeah, but check not, out our, you know uh, the, the announcement article says it arrives in March of 2023. Wow. Hmm. Get hype. So, so uh, that, yeah. that actually happens before Jedi survivor as well. Yeah. Assuming they get actually get their shit to the stores on time. Right. Right. They've had trouble with that. One can but... never assume. There are other Legion expansions that we should expect this year. The Ewoks, uh, maybe this summer, I would just random guess. And then maybe Ventress and Ahsoka, which they announced a long time ago, but we haven't heard anything about them since. Maybe that might be like a late fall thing. Yeah, I mean, because those have been like announced but they're not like they haven't officially had i would say an official they're not on the asmodee store yet so they're not like official right. official yet so those could be a long ways out maybe i don't know um but that is like the extent of all the announced legion products that we're aware of i think soka ventress and ewoks oh and cody Commander oh cody. right yeah yeah yep yep um, he ought to be pretty soon i would think because he's been announced a long time ago yeah and they've been showing like they've been showing him all painted up on streams and stuff like that so like they were uh, they were using him to compare they were comparing the height of cody the cody mini to the dark troopers um mm. and some of the stormtroopers like the stormtroopers only come up to the dark troopers sh- shoulders so they are they're they're pretty tall mini i don't think there's anything in the pipeline for x-wing Weirdly enough, that we, that yeah, that we know of, um, you know, yeah, definitely right. nothing for Armada. Yeah. Um, I think we can certainly expect more announcements of Legion products throughout the year, um, but it's been it still seems a little slowed down compared yeah. to it, the it past. Just, it seems weird that there's nothing for X Wing. Yeah, that's it's wild like usually there's me. at least like one thing that hasn't come out yet before. Like, you know, there's never like a time where there's nothing. Yeah, um, but I mean, to be I don't fair, think we've even had like leaks or rumors, which is kind of wild. Like, there's usually something in the pipeline, right? And since they've been updating rules and stuff, it, it makes it seem like they've been wanting to keep it active. But you know, I don't know. They haven't announced maybe anything. They just keep doing these scenario things. Because to be fair, they've kind of done all the ships until they gotta wait for more shows to come out so they, they gotta <laughs> make like the Bad Batch ship um, and. Andor that, ships. Yeah, that crappy ship from Andor that he steals <laughs> from the junkyard. Like That ship is awesome. I, I love the design of that oh, ship. I, I think That's it's cool. cool, but it's also, you know, it's a piece of junk. Do an Obi-Wan uh, Inquisitor ship. But the thing is, if nothing's announced yet, you know, assuming that they maybe announce something soon, we can assume it's not going to come out to like later in this year right because like the battle of yavin siege of coruscant i think were announced in like may or something and we got them in october november so you know we're a ways out if nothing is announced yet. yeah so definitely maybe we'll get something though quarter four if anything um we mentioned hunters hunters has been coming out since forever if you forgot because everyone has forgotten about that game it's a Nintendo Switch slash mobile only title. It looked is like an arena shooter. That the, I like the art style and the characters. I don't know if the gameplay is. There's been some gameplay out there. They've been like demoing it at cons. Well, and there's 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 a couple oh, there, regions out there where the oh, game yeah. is out. Like oh yeah, there's been <coughs> an international like limited region release. I forgot about that. Yeah, and you you can play the game if you re- if you want to take the effort to like like you can use uh 
uh, like Blue Stacks or some other mobile emulator and set your, you know, change the region of your uh, your emulator and stuff like that. So there are people playing it. Uh, they just care a lot more about <laughs> putting yeah. some effort into being able to play this game than I do. Um, you know, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll try it out when it does finally release in my region, but there's just, I mean, what we've seen of the game hasn't, like, thrilled me or intrigued me enough to make me want to put the effort into uh, taking the steps I need to obtain the game. Right. So the next date we should have on our calendars, if you're interested in Star Wars gaming stuff, maybe, is April 7th through 10th is Star Wars Celebration in London, which presumably there'll be some more gaming announcements because we know there's a like a handful of studios now that are working on like sort of announced but not like titled Star Wars things like Ubisoft is they announced a while back they're working on a Star Wars game like an open world game um so I would hope that there's some kind of announcement trailers or you know teaser trailers for at least one new Star Wars video game at Star Wars Celebration in April. That, that would be cool. Is that a reasonable wish? I think it is. It's been they, these people have been working on these games for a couple of years now, so they they've got to have at least a title for us. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be some tidbits at least. Isn't that is that Ubisoft game releasing this year? Mm, probably not. Am I crazy? <laughs> What are they? Oh, by the way, saying. here's here's the latest news on Jedi Survivor, unrelated to this calendar thing we we're talking about. But um, the ESRB subs- description says that the words "ass" and "bastards" are heard in the game. Just so you know, Whoa. watch out! Watch out. <laughs> what Star Wars coming to these days? Uh, Star Wars game, Ubisoft Star Wars game will reportedly feature a fully customizable character that walks a path chosen by the gamer and will showcase an open and explorable galaxy. Uh, Mm -hmm. Ubisoft tweet reveals 2023 window for Star Wars game. Let's see. This was an article from January 2nd of this year from some website called Insider Gaming. Who knows if that's trustworthy or not? I tend not to... Yeah, I saw some bullshit about how it's going to be like uh going to be like No Man's Sky for Star Wars or some shit like that, like that open and it's like Oh, okay, here's And I you know, you know when I saw people sharing it and reposting it and stuff and so like you go back and you dig in the source and it's like yeah, some some clickbait fucking right. site. This um there is a Julian Garrity on Twitter, the creative director of Ubisoft, according to his, or not of, a creative director at Ubisoft in Malmo, which is where Massive Games is uh, in Malmo, Switzerland. Uh, Sweden. He said, Sweden, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sweden, much cooler country. Um, Happy New Year to you all. 2023 is going to be huge for us. So, doesn't mean it's coming out in 23, but maybe they'll show us they'll at least show us a whole bunch of stuff for this game that massive is working on oh he has a follow-up tweet to be clear i meant that 2023 will be huge for our teams building our game which you could be a part of because they posted some job openings um professional (laughs) news keep an eye on at ubisoft so sounds like he's like oh wait a minute i didn't mean it was coming out this year guys (laughs) right yeah maybe it is but probably not but like I said, I'm I'm expecting a trailer for whatever game that is at Star Wars Celebration. I think the big three this year are obviously Jedi Survivor and then Shatterpoint and the Deck Builder. I got a hunch those things are going to take up the most of our time this year. Oh, for sure, yeah. Because, yeah, I don't see myself playing Ewoks a ton personally i'm excited to get them but i don't know how much i'll actually play them yeah yeah 
Um, I mean, like Ahsoka and an Asajj, you know, I'll uh, could be I, really cool. I might pull my rebels back out again to mess with Ahsoka some, um, but I also really hate throwing white defense dice. So every time I I get the urge to build a rebel army, I always end up regretting it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, um, use Mandalorians. Um, one thing I, you know, we kind of talked about this in our hopes and dreams in last episode, but I would, you know, I, I, I really hope that at some point this year we get some more information about what the hell is going on over at Edge uh, with oh, the yeah. role-playing game. Yeah, definitely no, like, nothing to put on your calendar as far as Edge goes studios goes but come on guys i should call them do they have a phone number on their website <laughs> i don't know they're they're like french or spanish or something aren't they well they got phone numbers there about us <laughs> call them live on the podcast episode you're being well, interviewed here, by the joe here's a <laughs> here's a question for you two questions if you were a studio that publishes role playing game materials, should you do your good grammar? Answer that was rhetorical, yes. Second question. <laughs> what? Second question. RPG, the acronym we all know. Is it A R P G or an RPG? It's an RPG because it has yeah. a bell sound. Yeah. On their website it says A R P G Studio. Hmm. So, tisk tisk edge. Yeah, but I also I, I mean know. it's I'll let it slide because you know if you're looking at it like computer code, you go well yes, R is not a vowel, so it is a. But when you're seeing saying it aloud, it's. A, but if they're French, they should know better. In French, that's half the reason there's some weird letters is so <laughs> vowels and consonants flow nicely together. That's the only reason Anne is a thing in English. So words kind of True. flow together. Hmm. Um, uh, contact. Uh, they are in France, yes. Oh, I was going to say I thought it was Spain, but yeah. The, well, their mailing address is uh, in... I don't know what, which of these is the town. <laughs> <they're in. laughs> um, well, darn Sorry, folks. They don't have a, a phone number for me to just call up. And they're we're gonna have to back. mail them a letter and wait till they get back. Yeah, we could do that. Mail them a letter with like a little Polaroid of us going, please. <laughs> what about a uh, Star Wars like board game? So kind of like how we got Star Wars Clone Wars Pandemic, whatever it was called, and and we've had like Star Wars spot it in all these like little kind of i don't know 2022 is a real big year for all these like games joe has to buy that most people don't think twice right, about exactly um have you heard any rumors of things coming up for 23 that you're looking forward to or is are those things basically always like surprise releases they seem like they're it depends on the studio but a lot of them are surprises hmm um, like Jabba's Palace had some advance announcement, Clone Wars had some advance announcement, and Star Wars Villainous had some advance, but they're only like a, maybe a month or two advance notice. So definitely nothing where they're like, "Hey, we're putting out this big game in you know quarter three of 2023." So if we were to speculate, you know, what's going to be the next board game that has the next Star Wars version of the board game? Well, uh, you know, Katana. I'd like to see. So we got Star Wars Pandemic. Um, Star Wars Carcassonne is a thing that already exists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun. And and previously that hadn't been released in America. Um, I think because it came out sort of prior to Asmodee acquiring Fantasy Flight and, and thus getting the Star Wars license for board games and stuff. 
so I, I I would think that you know that would be sort of like a no brainer to release. They've got uh, a and the, the pandemic is a Z Man Games game. What who makes Carcassonne? Uh, so, Z Man Games. Oh. Um, which you know, Z Man is owned by Asmodee, also. So, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna, if you can claim that Outer Rim is a tile game and not a board game, you can claim Carcassonne <laughs> is a tile game and not a board game. <laughs> but yes. replace the meeples with minis, anyways. Pandemic's a board game. Oh, they added minis though. It's, it's a full of game. minis. <laughs> yeah. <okay>. Uh-huh. <laughs> what other games can we do that to? <laughs> just replace all the meeples with minis and now it's a minis yeah. game well then that's all you get like two little meeples and one big meeple or however many meeples you get one of them is a big guy because in star wars carcassonne there's combat basically uh-huh. if you uh like a region closes and there's multiple people in that region you have to like fight to see who actually gets control of it and the points for it and your big meeple gets bonuses you just like roll some dice, but mm. um, thematically does not work as well as regular Carcassonne. Where like here's a city, here's a field, and here's a road. You're like here's asteroids and here's hyperspace lanes and a planet. Um, I I'm surprised because Asmodee owns Catan, and Catan is the biggest game. You know. There's all sorts of different versions of Catan. I'm surprised there's not a Star Wars Catan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw down wait, wait. five bucks to say Star Wars Catan will be announced this year. It would be Settlers of Bo Catan. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Rule Thirty Four kind of thing. Uh, Settlers of Manan. <laughs> I hope they don't because I hate Catan. But. Aww. That's my guess. It seems a likely candidate of all of these, like, you know, gateway games to get Star Wars versions. And surprising that that one isn't, especially now that they're owned by Asmodee. That's that's my pick as most likely to get a Star Wars version in 2023. Catan. There's a million versions of Catan or maybe Ticket to Ride. I think Mm, Asmodee owns Ticket to Ride as well. Ticket to ride the Star Tours shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the literal name. Or maybe no, you I would have, instead of like connecting destinations with trains, you're just like lining up people to see like Phantom Menace in different theaters. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. I mean, I'm surprised they haven't. I mean, we should be getting like a High Republic board game you'd think to like tie in but uh, maybe it's we've not been saying enough. we should be getting a high republic x for a, I, what since since like the day high republic was announced almost yeah I, I i feel like the tabletop world somehow is i feel like people who play tabletop games and work in the tabletop industry are somehow like disconnected from the higher public entirely for whatever just don't read books like it's i mean it's it's sort of a niche thing unless you're like because it's an entirely like a publishing initiative yeah it's like it's like shadows of the empire but without the video game and toys but i feel like that's what made shadows of the empire successful like if it had been just the book would people care that much but it was a book and a video game, and a soundtrack, and, and a comic. toys, and a right. comic. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I was just reading the art of High Republic, and they cited uh, the success of Shadows of the Empire in like bringing people's awareness back to Star Wars when it was low, as like one of the things they're like, we could do this again, but like, but they didn't know. actually do any of the stuff from it. Well, they more like what, what if we just take a thing and do like this multi-format story, but yeah. try and just house it within publishing? Because I mean, it's they instead did of like books at least, right? It's it's books and young adult books and middle grade books and comics, so it's still like 
you know, a lot of different crossover, but it's a little different. I would love a game. I think you could easily repurpose Outer Rim, like take that engine and just make Higher Public, where instead of maybe it's cooperative and you're all playing as Jedi, working in the Outer Rim, fighting Nile, like basically the same system of like exploring the Outer Rim and doing stuff, but maybe it's cooperative and you're just you know, trying to save people and help things. Yeah. I, I'd i like to see something more like, okay, so we we're now getting a deck building game, which is like one of my favorite genres of games, uh, tabletop games. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I'd like to see is like a worker placement game. I really I enjoy say that. worker placement type games. And I mean, it could be like pit droids at oh. like Boonta Eve or something, you know, <laughs> or at uh, are you what's sending her them names? out into the Peli Peli Moto? Yeah, yeah, Leo's yeah, favorite. yeah. It's like her workshop, and different ships are coming in, and you have to like send your droids to work on the ships. And there's a bunch of people competing for a contract. It and writes you gotta, itself. You got to send people to the. You got to send your droids out to like the junkyards. Yeah, the scrap. To, yeah, yeah. To find the parts because you need to make sure. You, well, if this guy comes in and he needs an engine, I need to make sure I've got some engines in my inventory. And this, mm-hmm. and you can just make up all the words for the dumb Star Wars parts. Like, here's a hyper flux inverter coil. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! You listening, uh, Corey Kaneska? We got your next winner right here. Yeah, pay us. <laughs> I hate that theme. <laughs> <laughs> what if Pelimoto wasn't involved? And it was yeah, like I like it slightly more now. What if you're building pod <laughs> racers and then you have to race them at the end? That's what I I, I want to <laughs> I want a pod racing mini miniatures game like. Or just like a, yes, a board game that's racing. like racing. Because there's a number of good racing games. Just do that with pod racers. I mean, Leo, what kind of worker placement are you thinking? Like another Clone Wars? You're placing workers on planets that are being attacked by Separatists or what? Ewoks Building. in Bright Tree Village? Well, I was sort oh. of thinking, yeah, like you'd be placing them on different planets and stuff like that. But I was thinking like a cool theme could be more sort of like and again i mean at least this this kind of limits it to two like only two players like that's the problem with a lot of star wars themes is it's sort of like just straight up good guys versus bad guys so you're it can sometimes kind of limit you yeah that's um, why i but think like, the, the peli model one is a good idea fair <laughs> enough but i was <laughs> thinking, I you know like thematically i like the idea of like like one player say like the ISB and another player is like, you know, some rebel <gasps> spies and another player is maybe like, I don't know, like, like some represents like the huts or some shit like that. And, you know, you're, you're placing your agents on different planets to like try and get information and influence and stuff like that in the galaxy. How about an Andor themed one? It's on Narkina Five. You're placing your seven workers on your seven tables or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes they like have a seizure and you have to replace them. <laughs> <laughs> and they they try to break out. Sometimes you have to watch out. <laughs> uh, but I was gonna oh, say, like, yeah, you, you could, could do, do like a here's a you could do a, it's 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 all versus one. Each player has their own table. <laughs> And they're competing because the other player gets to punish and reward them. But there's the secret game where they could figure out that they can escape. And they're secretly like plotting and you have to like try and catch them in the act as they're trying to escape. Whoever's in last place, your guys get shocked. Um, yeah, so their productivity goes down. <laughs> yeah. Which is a good mechanic when you punish the loser. No, the so player gets back. shocked. Who's oh, yeah. Control. Yeah, there's a real, a real one of those like electrical, like, are... like a car battery it comes in the game. <laughs> right to your nipples. <laughs> Incentivizes uh... you to play the board game better. I mean, it's like uh, those there's like early two thousands party games where you just hold the uh, like a little trigger and whoever pushes it the slowest gets shocked. I was gonna say you could also do like a Geonosis Droid Factory or something, and then it's like. Uh, instead of worker placement, it's PK worker droid placement. Oh, 
How about and you're, that? You could that one. Then you can still have everybody for themselves, and you're like competing to like whoever gets the most quota of droids built can you know get a promotion. You are trying to be the daimyo of Tatooine, okay. of Mos Espa, oh. and you got to place your your five guys who represent <laughs> your entire criminal empire in various places around the city. Yeah, you've got a big Wookiee, a Gamorrean, a cyborg with a scooter, uh, and a, like an assassin, and those are people... And that's it. That's your entire criminal empire. <laughs> but here's the thing that makes this game stand out. A lot of worker placement... This I've got like five little workers to place. They all do the same thing. What if each worker had its own ability? Big Wookiee, mm-hmm. when I send him over here, he does something different than when I send Scooter Boy over there. Wookiee uh, placement. Corey Kaneska, what do you think? <laughs> A Wookiee placement game? I like that. <laughs> Suffice to say, there's a lot of options. And they could announce if, this at any time and like probably rush development and have it ready. Yes, yeah, if, if only the people at Asthma Day would call us as head of Star Wars license under Asthma Day, and we could oversee Fantasy Flight and AMG and Z Man and all that stuff. It would be so easy to to move product <laughs> if you just like put any thought into that license <laughs> it sells itself i mean it's star yeah. wars you can put star wars on a fucking soup can and everyone will go buy it <laughs> mm, star wars that's, soup that would be like it'd be like some yoda dagobah soup or what are you thinking i mean i'm not go look it up there's why star, don't there's we probably have star wars soup why don't we right have now. Why don't we have Cyril Karn cereal? Yes. Cyril would, Karn. Uh, yeah, I would buy that cereal. And then I'd sit there and like like and you pour your milk in it and it turns the milk blue. Yes. I think we've actually talked about this on the show before. <laughs> I swear. Oh that know. oh the cereal he eats in the show was literally a some special cereal that was in stores around like people were like oh it's probably this one because it looks the same and this was in stores about the time they were filming i I don't remember which it was like some special like captain crunch or something um you could you could take cereal karn and do that as a worker placement just take like the most boring um like dry mathy euro game and then put like the corporate sector and isb like bureaucracy over it and all of a sudden it becomes fascinating because now i'm like you're moving around your workers and like Mm. the like game subtly implies that you're causing like untold suffering but you're just doing your job and it's like some kind of like it's sort of like that what is it like papers please yeah yeah like that but like a board game where you play as a cog in the fascist machine but you know you're just doing your little job making Moving around your meeples and stuff. There's just so many options. I think uh, we should just... Next episode, we can just do a whole five-hour pitch meeting. (laughs) Just on worker placement games. Well, not just worker placement. We could have have like a a game where you have to uh, try and acquire antiquities and sell them to help fund the rebellion. <laughs> yeah, and you go to you go to Doc you go sell some to Maz Kanata, you go sell some to Doc Ondar at Galaxy's Edge and he mm-hmm. you know then uh, Disney's happy cuz we're talking about Galaxy's Edge. But then you'd if you were like me playing that game, you'd pick up the card and be like, "Oh, what thing did I just find?" and it would just be some like obscure item from random episode of animated show number 3. And then yeah, why? Like, oh, I remember that thing. That's so cool. They put it in this game. Why does the damn theme park have more different tie-in media shit than the High Republic? That annoys me. Um, depends on what you mean. The theme park has, I think, two or three novels, whereas the High Republic has a lot more than that. The theme park has. A lot of action figures because they sell them there. It has a video game. There's a VR game, Tales from Galaxy's Edge, which includes flashbacks to the High Republic. 
technically wow, it was really? the first ever High Republic content released because it came out before the books. Yeah, you play as some, wow. I forget her name, some uh, purple Miri Allen, I think. She hangs out with Yoda and they go looking for stuff. Um, wow. I refute your claim that there's more Galaxy's Edge merch or not. Well, there's probably more merch. As far as like lore and story, there's not more of that. Although, no. Well, they go there. Anakin and Thrawn go there in one of those Thrawn books. There's more High Republic story. Okay, but there's more like custom menu items. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's the more King brand Kong. recognition for Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. There's people that literally go like every day if they live in, you know, buy it in California or whatever. It's crazy. Right? Yeah, you got to remember there's also shit like they had to make Han and Leia have their honeymoon on the on the ship that takes you to yeah. Galaxy's Edge. I actually, and... mm-hmm. I actually like that book, but yeah, they're on that ship. And there was a comic for that ship and it sucked. <laughs> I mean, it was okay, but it was basically each issue was the droid who works there being like, let me tell you a story about the time uh, Aura Singh was on this ship. Let me tell you the story about the time Anakin and Padme were here. Let me tell you a story about the time. So it's Honda kind of here. like, um, what is that? The, the, like the, like the little animated shorts with Roger telling a story, uh, yeah, but, but only, of. but only not as, not as good as those. Definitely were. a lot more forced where they're like, there's like a current, like the first orders messing with the ship and the passengers are like, the droid's like, let me calm you down by telling you a story about the time this uh, higher public guys were on this ship. <laughs> They're like, who are you talking about? <laughs> what is this? Um, I want, here's a pitch for a game that only, it would be just for me. This is a self-indulgent pitch. I want a game like those old um, 80s board games like Escape, the Death Star, and that Hoth, Ice Planet Hoth adventure game or the Ewok games. A really old, retro-looking kids game type thing, but based on the cartoon from the holiday special hmm. with lots of bright pink and blue and yellow, and you just hop around the board and it, like Luke is chasing Boba Fett or something. It's just like one of those games where all you do is roll dice and then move your guy and there's like nothing deeper to it. And I'd be like, ha this is great. Because <laughs> it's Boba Fett and he's different <laughs> colors. Well, that's everything you can expect in 2023. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yep. I do wish we had more to talk about, like namely X-Wing and Armada. Yeah. yeah. Or, but yeah, I guess that's kind of it maybe there'll be an expansion for clone wars pandemic that game doesn't need an expansion no uh i i mean that's it uh fantasy flight steve horvath give us a call we'll help you come up with new games man rpg stuff like they could just they could be releasing new books for like mandalorian era and like high republic era and it said they could like they would be doing so many like splat books it's and just, so like, dumping sad. them out but it's, not it's so any. sad that it's not there either just because like how vital star wars role-playing game is to like the history of star wars the fact that yeah. it's a sort of dormant right now is like sad like it should be coming out and that should be like the f- only source of information people have for some of this stuff in the higher public and you know not ga- non gamers are just going to yeah. buy it to read about the lore and stuff really edge, missed opportunity edge give us a call <laughs> none of us speak uh french was it french was that french. right yeah i'd i'd bet money that they speak english they probably don't like it French people don't like speaking English last time I checked. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's it. Um, let us know if you want to uh, sit in on another Jodocast pitch meeting. And please tell us what your most anticipated release is for 2023. I'm going to go through them real quick once again, in order, probably. Gideon, Dark Troopers, 
the deck builder game, Jedi Survivor, Ubisoft game, question mark, Ewoks for Legion, Hunters, question mark, uh, Shatterpoint, and Ahsoka and Ventress. I think that's, that's all the, the hard, hard-coded stuff. Yeah, it sounds right. And, of course, you can most excitedly expect lots of cool new content from the Jotocast, both on your podcast feeds and on our YouTube channel. There's surely going to be some Adepticon episodes. Um, yep. There's going to be more gameplay videos for, I don't know, several stuff different games. for probably. games? Yeah. There will be stuff. My promise. At least some stuff. <laughs>